Hi guys, um, I'm really sorry I couldn't be with you there today. Um, so instead what I have done is to give you a video on why to study computer science. Now I'm sure I don't need to convince many of you why you need to go off to university um, and take this a little bit further. Um, but I thought I would give you 10 good reasons uh, to take computer science a little bit further. Um, and not just because we love the actual subject. So really, really quickly, um, these are my 10 or top 10 reasons to, to study computer science. Um, there are so many more um, and loads of you have already found your niche um, that you think that you want to take a little bit further, but don't close your mind to finding more um, exciting things. So I'm just going to take you through these ones. So computer science is essentially part of everything that we do. I mean, you've got this global world up here um, and we are quite literally living in a digital global world. Um, everything that we are going to do in any industry at all is going to have something uh, digital, um, which is part of it. So one of the things that you get out of studying computer science is that you understand the problem solving and um, the integration that we need to have in order to live in a essentially digital world. Um, computer science helps you solve problems. Now pro solving problems doesn't necessarily mean that you are a computer scientist. Um, but if you have a grounding in computer science, you can then move that into a number of different industries. If you are solving problems um, as part of a medical profession, um, you can use your computational thinking in order to create a, a logical answer. If you need to argue your case with somebody, um, then you can use your computational thinking um, to argue a logical case. And it's very difficult to argue against logic. Um, if you wanted to go out and help other people, um, com computing is going to really help. Um, and we have obviously this idea of medical sciences, um, but not just medical science, any kind of innovation. Um, if we have really, really thought about it, and we do a lot of ethics works for the A-level, and that continues into the degree. Uh, part of that is to say, well, actually, if we can, should we? And if we should, then let's do it. OK, so if you are very much career oriented, um, the average pay for a, a developer which has just come out of university, so com computer science graduates, um, at the moment is around 25,000, which is not bad. Um, certainly graduate salaries have reduced because we've had more people who have actually got degrees. Um, but computer science graduates have maintained that decent salary straight after their degree. And the rates of employment are really high. Um, on average, a computer scientist is looking at somewhere around £52,000, um, but again, that is not the maximum, and certainly this doesn't show the maximum for some of those really niche, um, niche areas. Um, if you are one of our excellent girls in computer science, then your prospects unusually are oh, actually very good. Um, and this is because there is still a huge deficit of women in computing. Um, in fact, there is a huge deficit of women in STEM careers um, at all. And there are still lots of programs for you to encourage you. Now, this seems a little bit strange because looking at our, our courses, there's really no difference um, between male and female computer scientists. It's just that fewer women choose to take up this role um, and we're working on it. Um, for those of you who are really interested in maybe traveling um, or who don't want to maybe commute to an office, if you think of uh, your career as being stuck at a desk, um, this is not necessarily true for computer science. You do not have to sit at a computer um, hiding away from the rest of the world um, in just a very small team. Um, you can work from home, um, hence the picture. Um, 
you can uh, work essentially anywhere in the world. So if you have the ability to work as a computer scientist, you can take your life, um, you can move it to almost any country at all, um, and your skills will still be valid. You will not have to retrain in a new skill set um, to then still be valid in another country. Um, obviously, you will have to continue your skills wherever you are, but um, these same skills apply. If you choose to not have computer science as your main, um, main career, computer science is still valid. So you can take this and you can apply it to other industries. Uh, you can go into business analytics. You could take this into um, oh, um, physics. You could um, take this out into teaching. Um, you can go into um, academia. You can take uh, computer science. You can go into hardware, software. IT support, uh, games development, there are, are such a huge, huge um, realm of different uh, job opportunities out there for you. Um, and it's not until you've actually been in the workplace that you will find your niche. And it may well take you three, four, five jobs um, for you to really understand which part of this actually applies to you. Um, and don't close your mind to saying, well, actually, I've got this job now, so therefore this is what I have to do for the rest of my life. Uh, there are always opportunities in computer science to move direction. There is a sort of a bell curve. We start off with this huge, huge learning curve, and we go in as junior developers, or we go in as systems analysts, um, and we build up, and we find what works for us. After that, um, once you've got some work experience behind you, then you can really start to find a, a small niche which really applies to you. Um, and ultimately, once you've found that niche, if you want to move on again, your skills are still valid. Um, loads of people in computer science are actually very creative. Uh, it seems something that um, is missing um, in the stereotypical STEM careers people don't see them as very creative, whereas actually they are. Um, and the thing that you can see above you is actually a, f a piece of fractal art which was created um, using an algorithm. So this thing actually grows on its own. It's not just about the arts. We can go into essentially anything which allows us to be um, graphically creative, uh, but also mathematically creative. So again, this is all going back to problem solving the actual art of programming is still creative. You are still creating something. You are still um, almost not just solving a problem, but um, creating a product. Um, and in some cases, not even creating a product. You are just creating something that interests you um, and that inspires you. And if you are creating something which inspires you to keep going, then you are creating art. We have already done a fair amount of teamwork in our lessons, but this doesn't stop at the end of your A-level. The reason we bring it in now is because actually as a computer scientist at university um, or in the workplace, you are going to need to work either as individuals or um, in a team. Some people will work um, as a number of different people in a team. Um, and again, this is finding your niche. You may well be that leader. You might be our project manager who has the vision. Um, or you may well be the coder who is listening to our project manager up here and thinking, it's not going to happen, and I know technically why. Um, it's great to spend a little bit of time just sat on your own without any distractions. Um, and it's also useful to be able to bounce ideas off of each other. And if you are working around the world, you have now got the technology to work in a large team whilst also working on your own. Teleworking is becoming more and more um, a big thing in our industry. Um, and our ability to connect with other people all around the world because of the internet allows us to create really cohesive uh, computer science teams. If you are going to 
go to university and study computer science, you are not just learning how to code, you are not just learning the maths, you are actually learning a valuable skill for your entire life. Um, the reason we say this is because computer science actually teaches you how to learn. Not just because you quite likely will be studying artificial intelligence, which is essentially the psychology of how we learn um, and taking our ability to learn and putting that into um, our computer. Um, but actually, this prepares you for a thing called lifelong learning, which essentially is your ability to learn for yourself. Computer science is never going to provide you with the answers. There is a number of areas where there is a right and wrong answer, but there are other areas where there will never be a correct answer. And the only way in which you are going to be able to formulate an answer is for you to research and is for you to practice um, and create all of those skills that allow you to learn not just computer science, but any other subject. Um, and also, the universities are at the forefront of computer science. They are our researchers. They are the people who have the time, the ability, the resources uh, to spend creating uh, additional pieces of uh, code, software, hardware, which are going to then impact industry. They are always going to be our research leaders. And if you are studying at a university which has a really good uh, research department, then you are going to be involved in that frontline uh, industry changing technology. So for those four, potentially three years that you are at uh, university, make the most of your professors because they are going to be the people who are going to inspire you to move into an area um, of your, your career. And finally, I'm going to come back to this one. It is part of everything that we do. Um, computer science is the way in which we have now placed ourselves in a digital world. Without that digital world, mo many of us literally cannot function. So you have the opportunity to quite literally change the world. So go and study computer science.